I'm Julie Bartke with Session Update. A couple of weeks ago, the House Public Safety Committee took up roughly a dozen bills that would change Minnesota's gun laws. While in the Senate, the number is much smaller, and several bills were vetted in the Senate Judiciary Committee on Thursday. One of those, sponsored by Senator Bobby Joe Champion, inspired the most debate. This particular bill is really about background checks, and, and, and background checks are the only systematic way to stop people from buying firearms who are not allowed to have them, and to be able to stop the gun trafficking that plagues our, our communities. But federal and state law only requires background checks for gun sales at licensed dealers. Federal law requires a background check through the federal system before each gun sale from a dealer. We know that there are gaps in that system. We propose to extend the background check to cover all gun sales, not just those at federally licensed dealers. Some claim that this is registration. It is not registration. We don't have registration of guns under current law. All this bill does is to extend our current law to cover more transactions. This will make illegal the practice of selling guns with no background checks at gun shows online for in-state sales and, and at, and at ven venues like garage sales and other private sales. All of these paths are explained or, or exploited, excuse me, by gun traffickers. And the illegal guns end up on our streets. And being a person who represents the city of Minneapolis, I understand that this is a real problem. We try to be patient. Professor Olson is incredibly patient. He's been coming here for 24 years and answering the same questions over and over. We try to be calm, to be logical, to prevent, present objective facts and evidence. <laughs> but you know what? <clears throat> We're getting tired of it. I'm getting tired of it. Senator Champion is right. There is a problem in Minneapolis. Minneapolis has 7% of Minnesota's population and more than 40% of the homicides. Minneapolis outmurders the rest of the state by a factor of almost 800%. Oh, there's a problem in Minneapolis, a huge problem, but you know what? It has nothing to do with hardware. It also has nothing to do with me or with the 99.9% .9 of law-abiding gun owners in Minnesota. We're not going to take your guns, we keep getting told. No, not all at once. Instead, these bills add obstacle after obstacle, impediment after impediment. Want to buy your buddy's gun? Add $50 to the price. Add $50 to exercise a constitutional right. That sounds a lot like me. To a, like me. It sounds like a poll tax, a financial impediment to the exercise of a basic right. No background check is going to stop a criminal from getting his hands on a gun. I know that. Two and a half million Minnesota gun owners know it. And what's worse, I think the author knows it. We're not going to take your guns away, they say. Not all at once. Instead, the real intent, the real effect of these bills is to harass and tax and discourage the exercise of this constitutional right. I have heard it said today that this would create an inconvenience for those who want to sell a gun to a neighbor. If you are going to take into consideration the burden on the buyer and the seller, then you also must consider the burden or inconvenience of the victims and their families. When our daughter was kidnapped, raped, and murdered two weeks before her 19th birthday by two armed men, it was horrific. We went through months of inhibiting grief that reduced our capacities to do our jobs. The stress and the trauma dominated every aspect of our lives and those of our extended family, our friends, and our community. And we were just one family of the 30,000 gun violence victims that have similar experiences every year. Judiciary Committee members did not vote on any of the legislation today.